What's going on guys? I'm back with the Crawlmasters VS410. Now I've got a little bit of time left before I've got to get this thing finished and some parts are kind of rolling in here. I did pick up some new phones from Crawler Innovations for these 4.19 uh, Proline Hyrax. So I need to get those, you know, dismounted, new phones in there, find out which ones I like. I got the, the soft, the medium, and the firm. Also this week I got a couple of other things. Uh, I got the new PowerShift RC winch. The servo winch is in place there. This is the 200, or I'll, I'll have to put the actual uh, model number and link to it in the description below. But I bought this uh, through PowerShift RC. It was uh, somewhere around 80 bucks, something like that. But it's a super low profile. I actually mounted it from the bottom up and it just perfectly clears. Uh, you know, the pan hard throughout its entire stroke, the whole deal uh, came with a servo winch controller and a hook on there already pre-spooled with lines. So pretty much ready to go. I will have to take it back out as I do have to do some other bracing. I have done a little bit of the bracing on the driver's side of the chassis. I need to do that on the passenger side still. And I need to get my battery tray, you know, started up there, figure out how I'm going to mount it. I've got the the uh, mount holes on the side here. So I'll probably be able to use those so I don't actually have to tie anything into the actual um, tube work for the battery tray itself. But that is still uh, yet to be determined fully. We've got the SMT interior and I did design and 3D print my mount for it off of the transmission. So now I've got a nice big flat area. I'll throw a little bit of double-sided tape on that. It'll attach nicely to the bottom of this SMT interior and it sits uh, basically right where I wanted. Uh, from PowerShift RC, I also got a, a second version of his Dead Man switch, and I might actually go ahead and throw that in here. This one is more based on like an XT60 connector inside rather than just the magnetic. I need to get the bracing finalized on this so that I can get, you know, everything tacked into place, and then I can tear the whole truck down, sandblast the whole thing, so I can get a final coat of paint on it. Well, sandblast it down, finish weld everything, and then you know, sandblast again, final paint. Uh, I did add like one little brace back here on the side. I need to add that on the other side. And then I need to add some sort of uh, body nut back there or some sort of body retaining. Um, but that's my that's the only little minor things I think left in the rear that I'm going to do. And you know I still wanna mount a, or design a fuel cell and radiator mount for the rear. We're definitely getting close on a lot of the actual fabrication side. And then it's gonna come down to electronics placement, wiring, tuning, and you know, those important things. And lastly, on the fabrication side, I did pick up some new uh, gas lens stuff for my TIG. Gonna try that out, you know, it's still a clear Pyrex style cup, but this should change how the gas flows out of the TIG itself. And then I also picked up some, some stubbier ends or some actually almost deletes for the backside of my torch to really allow me to get into places a little bit tighter, but I'll just have to cut my tungstens down a little bit more. So definitely looking forward to installing these. I'm using a Razor Weld 160P TIG. Now I run that off of 110 normally. This cage is built out of 3 16 DOM tubing and eighth inch solid rod. Now, this is the first time that I've actually worked with 3 16 DOM tubing. I get it from Stock Car Steel. It's very expensive. It's very expensive to ship. So it's one of those things that I wanted to be a little bit more economical. Now I did get a tip from uh, Shane Zerba, who has used this stuff a lot more than I have, saying that it is a little softer, so you wanna make sure that you do plenty of bracing. So I'm definitely gonna take his advice on that. Now, as far as, uh, you know, welding this goes, I'm actually TIG brazing. I'm not TIG welding. It's you use, the torch is still the same, but you actually don't have to heat the metal as much as you do when you're TIG welding. Basically, you're able to just get both sides hot. It's like 1700 degrees Fahrenheit versus 24 or 2600 or something like that. Big difference in temperature between TIG brazing and TIG welding. And then the filler rod looks very similar, but it's actually silica bronze rather than regular uh, TIG filler material. So. Uh, silica bronze is pretty uh, reasonably priced. You can pick that up, you know, for for cheap, and it allows you to weld, you know, thin metal to thick metal very easily. It allows you to do different types of metals uh, welded together. But for me, the big benefit is since I'm welding this tube, which has a thin wall of O35, you know, I don't have to get it as close, and it's so easy to burn through that stuff. So I can use a little bit lower heat, being able to flow that silica bronze in there and move it around 
it's just a lot easier. But enough of that, I'm gonna try and get some work done before I've gotta get out of here tonight. So let's jump out to the shop and try and get a little bit more done, see if we can get that much closer to getting this thing ready for the event. Chassis all broke down, cleaned up. Tomorrow now I'll come in and finish weld everything. You know, all the areas that I couldn't get to with the car assembled, make sure that it's all welded well on both sides, grind out any welds that I did a poor job at. And that'll give me a, a pretty good base. So, so, I mean, there's more bracing I could do for looks or fun, or I mean, even actual functional bracing, but it's not really needed. A lot of this was just for fun anyway. and. You know, this is supposed to be a competition rig, so I should have been more conscious on adding weight and things like that, but, uh, I, you know, it's still more about having a, a fun or cool looking build than, than anything. So that's why it ended up like it did. Now, as many of you probably noticed or uh, could, you know, figure out, I did weld right to the chassis rail so this doesn't bolt and unbolt. Then there was things like the front servo mount and the rear chassis brace that are basically uh, almost permanently in place. The rear chassis brace I could pull out if I wanted, I'm just not super concerned with it, but that front servo mount is, it's in there. That is a part of the chassis, even though it's not welded, um, it does, it's not gonna come out. So I don't really care, not a big deal. Um, you know, if you wanted to get much more in depth, you could have tried to uh, make all of this so it bolted on, but I mean, with some of the bracing, how I did it, it just wouldn't have been possible. And so, uh, you know, that's the way it is. I did weld up the uh, the plate on the front and, you know, put a little hoop in there for a fair lead or a guide and, you know, brazed all the way around that. I'll, I'll go in there and I'll clean that up with a file or a Dremel, make sure that everything's pretty decently smooth. But basically I just have a lot of uh, finish welding to do and then, you know, a little bit of grinding to clean things up. I'm not gonna get overly crazy with it. I'm just gonna get it, 
good enough so that it looks decent when it's painted. Um, I need to stop on the way home and pick up some primer and some wheel paint. I like to use that durable wheel paint uh, for chassis stuff. I'm just gonna, and I'm gonna sh shoot this whole thing, probably a gun metal or a, a silver uh, of some sort and call it good. I'm looking forward to getting this thing finished though. I uh, wanted to make some progress tonight. Hopefully I can uh, finish weld this thing maybe tomorrow um, or Sunday. I don't know which one is gonna happen, but we'll see. Just trying to find little chunks of time I can take and get in there, get stuff done and move forward. So that's where we're at. And I hope I don't forget, I've got to get those rear body nuts uh, or some sort of body mounting system in the back done. It's very important have not done that. So that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for all the comments on the last one, guys. I was doing this as just kind of a fun thing. I used to do more fab videos than I do now. And um, it was cool to see all the comments. I really appreciate the comments on, you know, I'm always worried that this stuff isn't going to be as relatable and people aren't going to like it as much. So I, you know, then, you know, the comment, then the content that I do, that's more, you know, mainstream or whatever. So um, I'm glad that it got a good response. I'm, I'm happy, uh, happy that it did just because I, I do enjoy doing this stuff a lot. So um, hopefully I get time to do more of it. I am enjoying it. I am trying to get my fabrication stuff set up uh, more conveniently. That's all I got for now, guys. Thanks for watching again. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not already. Notification bell so you see them as soon as I upload. See you guys in the next one.